I left off after the uh, first temple wars that happened 600,000 years ago. The next most important thing, and that's very important, because this is where something very special was created. I'll tell you about in a minute. The second temp set of temple wars occurred um, in 247,511 uh, 247,511 years ago. Okay, that involved the inner earth groups that began to fight, the, the inner earth Rama races that began to fight, and it divided the stellar nations in relation to them. It also divided the surface cultures in relation to them. Um, I could get down to you know, who and who, who is on which side. That's okay. But that's... But um, yeah, that will just take up an, an awful lot of time. It basically created, within the Rama races, two divisions. One that still identify themselves as the Rama, and another, they call themselves the Shambhali. The Shambhali aligned themselves with the Emerald Order Orphim and were very supportive of the 12-strand pattern. Uh, some of the Orphim actually came in at that period to try to help the Rama, uh, the Shambhali, and to defend themselves against the Ramas. And they were trying to defend the surface humans, the, the races and cloister races that were coming, from being infiltrated and hybridized by the Rambas and by the Anunnaki and stellar races. And during that period, because it was all going crazy again, where everybody was fighting with each other, and it just keeps escalating and escalating until it gets to the point where somebody much higher has to intervene because the planet's going to get destroyed. Before it got to that point, there was a negotiation made called the Emerald Covenant, and that was taking both sides getting them to agree to allow the human lineage to evolve to its 12 strand, but also allowing hybridization programs for the other Anunnaki and Rama based races who are at this point getting what's called in code convolution, where they're losing their century codes or ability to evolve because of their infiltration of the draconian avatar matrices. It was ripping down their coding progressively. So it was like, all right, stop fighting you guys for two seconds. <laughs> long enough to see how we can fix this problem for both of us. The Emerald Covenant was entered into by both sides. It involved a whole bunch of different races. It involved the Shambhali on one side and the Rama on the other. They agreed to not fight with each other. It involved uh, the Elohim and also another group called the Seraphim, which were the ones involved with Vega. that originally had the Elohistic families that got involved with the dark avatar matrices and created uh, another strain that they called Seraphim. Now the Sarahs that had helped us before were out of that lineage, but it crossed back over. So they were good guys. The Sarahs and the Seraphim are not the same thing. Okay. Um, during the Rama Wars, when the Emerald Covenant was negotiated, some interesting things happened in the the Elohi families, in the, the Emerald Order Councils themselves. There was a group that really was more pro Anunnaki evolution, even though they were, you know, originally part of our side. This is where you've had a division form between the Guardian Alliance, who upheld and always will the Emerald Covenant to evolve humans to twelve strand, and then another group they call themselves the Galactic Federation, who associated themselves more with, all right, we'll let humans evolve to a degree. We're more interested in evolving the cloister hybrid Anunnaki races, and you still have that division today look on the websites and see some propaganda being put out by the Galactic Federation about where your forefathers are coming to rescue you will follow us. They have contact committees set up all over the planet. It's a real ET movement happening here. So this is where that division started, was, you know, 200 <coughs> years ago. Um, we all agreed that we would assist in the evolution of all of them. Once again, reconfirming that we're not just trying to evolve them, we're trying to help everybody here. With the Emerald Covenant, a race called the Nephite, Nephites was created. Now, in certain other people's material, it, they have talked about the Nephites and the return of the Nephites. The Nephites were a race strain that took cloister race, human races, from here and combined them with the race on, from Tara that originally was part of this race but had got contaminated by Anunnaki. When we fell from Tara, or when our consciousness ended up down here, there were two divisions made in the Turanusian race strain. One was the Adami Kudman, which are the Adami races that we came out of. The other were the Belly Kudin, 
they were the ones who had been turned to see, but had gotten involved with the Anunnaki and had their coding coding in them because of that. Right. The Nephite experiment was intended to bring in the rest of the human lineage, the Belicadium, and the Anunnaki races into hybridization where they could get their flight codes back, where they could get their DNA you know, back in the, um, you know, up into the diamond codes. What happened during that experiment was it was being observed by the real dark avatar matrices that just don't want any of us to particularly involved, all they're interested in is using us. They infiltrated some of the Nephite races by literally body snatching during the fetal integration process. When the soul of the, the incoming soul was trying to get into the body pattern, they would literally knock it out and put one of their own in. And they raised within the Nephite families a strain of pure Dracronian dark avatars that had high coding and they could fit the D11 dark avatar. They became called Nephidim, and they have been given us problems for ages. They invaded inner earth, they got mixed up with Brahma races, they got involved with something from Cirrus B and contaminated them, and they have been involved with certain uh, cloister and root races here, where we've evolved something that wasn't supposed to be there at all, which was pure black sun G DNA lines, right within the human lineage itself. It was because of the Nephidim, which was the part of the Nephite experiment that went bad. Okay, these guys are coming back. I mean, there's some, some people in other teachings, they're saying, yeah, the return of the Nephites. Yes, they're coming back, which is like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad about that as long as they're, you know, as long as we know they're Nephites and not Nephidim at this point. Uh, it's also the return of the Nephidim. They're making their presence known, trying to get control of the Mentation. So these guys all started back in the period of the Rama Wars, the Temple Wars and the Rama Wars. Um, a number of us were probably there. Okay? We have in our DNA, in our cellular memory, association with at least one of these periods of temple wars and with the cloister races. Because when the calling for this, this particular uh, series of presentations was put out, it was put out for those who had that coding in them. Nobody else would respond. So you can rest assured that somewhere in there this applies to you, that some of these periods apply to you, which can be helpful in trying to place your own incarnational history in your feeling tones as they come up as you move through the drama that you're in there. All right. <coughs> now, uh, with the Rama Wars, uh, the negative side won again. They keep doing that, <laughs> unfortunately. And that's why this time we're being very aggressive with our intervention. The light mm -hmm. families tend to take it a stance of non-intervention. They're not aggressive and pushy because they try to be fair to everybody. But it's like dealing with um, you know, an army who marches in in perfect order with a little drummer in front and a bunch of snipers that just takes them out because they're hiding in the bushes and, and there's no rules to the you know no rules to the board game. So being nice guys has not always been to the benefit of us, but it has allowed us to keep a level of consciousness that didn't turn us into them, where we didn't get as bad as they were, because that's not going to solve anything. But at this point, I mean, there have been times when Guardian Lines have been in major battles. They've been in stellar battles. They were a part of the Thousand Years Wars, which was Star Wars right over their heads. They were part of the Electric Wars that ended the first scene. So they are not complete pacifists where they'll just let, you know, reality systems get wiped out without defending. Because <coughs> when you're in polarity, sometimes it's necessary to do that. If you can get your consciousness out of polarity, you don't have to deal with that. That's what this human Christ consciousness is about. Then you can blow yourself out of here and not deal with any of this nonsense anymore. But if you choose to come in as a helper, where you're here to put yourself into the polarity to help harmonize the drama, that's what a lot of us are here for, or because you're working on your polarity conflicts too, then you need to define a medium stance. You can just lay down and let people walk on you all the time, or you can learn an assertive stance, and that's what we're taking. Okay, what happened in um, the Rama Wars was the Nephidim that got primary control. They started hybridizing with the races and really contaminating the race strains again, which is a setback for our goal of achieving 12 strains you know, DNA. They also knew that in 210,216 years ago, that's when the Amethi Stargates were open, doing some open again. And they wanted to make sure they had control of the planet when that happened because they want to use the Stargates to infiltrate the Taco Orion so they can go out into other time matrices. Well, in the last period, and they were like, they got control, and a lot of us went underground 
or some of us were evac'd out and just the races, you know, part of those races was just evolved in other systems because it was, it, we were under dominion down here, negative dominion. Um, it finally culminated again into another set of wars that occurred during the time when the Stargates opened, when, when they were due to open. It began a little bit before that and about, about 211,000 years ago. That's when the big guns, the D-11 avatars, decided to really show their force here, the Dark Ones, because they were hell-bent on getting control of Amente. And at that point, because so much higher level negative interference was being sent in, the Light families also sent in major higher level interference to interfere with their program. The Light forces decided this was the time for intervention. We already lost the pattern of Arimatana in the first set of temple wars, which stunted the planet's evolution. And now they're just gonna hybridize the races to the point where they're never gonna reach a 12-strand evolution. So both of the big guns got involved on the Elohim families. You had the Elohim councils, the Orphi, and the Emerald Order came in with the fleet. And we came in and we aligned with the Shambhali races and the cloister races that were still, you know, carrying loyalties to you know, the, the Emerald Covenant. We came in to defend the Emerald Covenant and to reset the pattern of the time into the Earth group. That's what we came in for, but we came in too late. And I was personally a part of that scenario, and I know there's a number of people in our group in our extended group that were also. We started to trip over those memories in, uh, in January when we did some grid work on January 1st, and I just started seeing the movies running. I saw all the faces and I couldn't I knew their names. <laughs> so it, it was very moving. It was it was heartbreaking really. We it, it happened two hundred and ten thousand two hundred and sixteen years ago. We came in about four years earlier than that and we're trying to secure the temple complexes because the light side had managed to have uh, certain temples, you know, complexes and fortified areas and they had weapons that are like Star Wars compared to what we have. They had crystal weapons that were used through the temples to, for defense and that kind of stuff. We came in and we also still had control over a good portion of the grid. We couldn't use the portals the right way because there was too much interference. But we needed to come in and hold the fort. And we tried. We decided we aligned with the Breno races, which were the cloister races that had been with the Atlanteans, and tried to protect their interests until they, they had stayed out of the Anunnaki interbreeding. And we came into their temples and tried to fortify them. And there were massive air raids coming, and there was also what is happening right now in our culture is what took us down. It wasn't the air raids that took us down. What took us down was for the four years that we were there, for the years before that, they had used propaganda. The Nephidim looked like us. We all looked very similar to each other, and they came in with a song and dance line of, well, everybody's supposed to be unified. You know, you can't take a stance against us or anything. We're trying to be part of, you know, we're just trying to unify the races. If that were true, it would have been fine. But that was not what they were trying to do. They knew that through sexual union, they could progressively contaminate the coatings of the light-coated races. So they seduced them continually. And they would seduce them physically. And they would seduce them in loyalties to the point where you didn't know good guys from bad guys or that there were really any bad guys. And meanwhile, they're trying to get control of the grids through the coatings they're getting from you. This is what they were doing then. This is what they're doing again. They were doing body snatching right out from under people. They would get somebody with light codes to have a relationship with them and get them under mind control and then allow one of theirs to essence displace, pop them out of body and put one of theirs in it. This is the stuff they were doing. They were setting people up, smiling in your face, telling you sweet stuff, and spouting unity consciousness. Well, at the same time, what they were doing was body snatching. And it was horrible to watch because it ripped apart the light races because it was so believable. And the light races wanted to believe that that's what was going to happen. Yes, unity, that's what we're all fighting for. That's what we're trying to do. So they believed them. So the light, the people that were part of the Orphean, part of the Glenoi, they, they look at each other and they start to divide among themselves. The ones who were saying, oh, well, we should be nice to them. They're really not that bad. I don't think they mean harm. The others are saying, please don't. We know what they're trying to do here. We're not against them, but they're trying to take us down. It divided the light workers as well, which left huge vulnerabilities 
in the temple security systems. And that's what took us down. Finally, they got control. In a particular temple I was a part of in that incarnation, they infiltrated, and these were temple cities. They weren't just a few little pyramids. These were major pyramids, many of them step type. And they had areas where crystal, large crystals would be used, like you'd see a crystal sticking out the top, but it all went all the way down to the earth, mm -hmm. huge. We were invaded, and you're talking about hundreds of thousands, armies of hundreds of thousands. We had fortification of hundreds of thousands. They invaded our temples because people let them in, because they decided to trust them. And the inner council, watching all of it happen, and going, oh, you know, we're in trouble, <laughs> you know? By the time it became obvious we were in trouble, it was too late, and they had taken aggressive military control of the temples because they wanted the crystalline uh, technologies. We had to control the stargates. We had control of the stargates. The Emerald Order has the security contract and always has since the beginning of Clemente. When it was set up, we always were responsible for the security. That was the only way we got permission to do the Amente stargate thing because it was such a risk to the Mentaka portals. We had to be responsible for making sure those portals did not get invaded. And they came in and they would have gained full control over the Stargates and they would have accessed Mentaka. They, we were trapped here. And this was like major. There are places that are now in Florida that were involved. There are places in Egypt that are involved. There are places in Peru that are involved, in China, like the lands of China. There were temples all over the place. And it was a massive attack. This is like a global war type thing. We had to destroy our own temples, and we couldn't get a lot of our own people out. It was either the earth grids go, and Mintaka gets taken over, or we have to sacrifice ourselves. And it came down to we'd get as many of us out as we could. They were evacuating all over the place, but it was all happening so fast. They were, we had one more seal to release. You know how we're releasing seals on the halls of Minty. Now these are the security seals that we were responsible then and now for releasing. If you don't release them, the whole thing goes in the pole tilt, cleans itself off. <laughs> okay, it's a restart system. It's part of the security system that if the ones who hold the key codes aren't here, there's something wrong. And it shuts down so nothing else can invade the, the portals to Mutaka. All right, that's what we're facing this time as well. But in that time, there was one more seal to release, and they were going after the person whose body was keyed to that seal. If they got it, they would have taken Mutaka. And the Syrian council sent in the air raids, and they flattened the towers. They nuked it, they blew them up. It's not exactly nuclear, but it's a crystal based technology, but it kind of works like that. Um, many of us were trapped, and many of you may feel a resonance to this because I think a lot of you were there in some context. And it was just like the final hours. You knew fleet was coming, and you knew that you loved them, they loved you, and they couldn't get you out in time. You were stuck there. You were stuck in the temples. You tried to get out of the temples, the Nephidim would get you. You know, they'd kill you there. And that's worse because they torture you, and they had like mind control things to read your memory matrix. And you know, so if they got you, you had to be dead. They couldn't do it if you were dead. So they would torture you and to get your memory matrix out, turn you into a total vegetable. So it was like the lesser of the evils was getting blown up, actually. In those times, that, had, that has affected us tremendously here because we didn't get to reset the grids. They got control again over the planetary grids, except that was set up and was called a 10 code pulse, which means the eighth and 12th dimensional frequency bands were literally blocked out of the planetary grid, which means the consciousness on it could not plug in their 8th and 12th strands. They made it so we operated like they did because we couldn't access our own strand imprints. And it got worse from there. <laughs> so this was a big period of time. I think for this group it was a big period of time because I, I think a lot of you were part of those days. Um, after that, there were progressive, well, actually after, right after temples were exploded because the final seal was not released, the clear seal was not released, it went into shift. And a lot of the negative ones went to inner earth or got evac'd out. We got as many of our guys out as we could and down to inner earth. But it went into full pole shift. And it wasn't a full reversal, but it was a shift. And after that, there was something that has to do with solar frequencies, that there's certain things that they align the long way with the magnetic fields between earth and the sun. It's called a red pulse. 
is a D1 frequency burst that gets transmitted from the sun that literally vaporizes anything that's white on Earth. There's nothing that can sustain that vibration. And it hit, we were hit with a red pulse here, but everybody was wiped out from the timelines and stuff anyway, so it didn't matter. But it was, here we go again, restart. The ones that didn't escape were, were flattened. And eventually there will be, there, there will be things found that can just as easily confirm this history as not. You know what I mean? Archaeology is like funny science. Oh, well, we think it's this. That's the key word, think. Okay, everything is an interpretation of archaeology. So eventually they will find an end. I think they already have some stuff that would support this, but they're interpreting it differently. Okay. Now, after this period, we got into a period where the Nephidim and the negative ones were fully under control here, and anybody left from the good side that came up from the inner or whatever, they were just hiding. They lived in underground tunnel systems. They hid from them. And we got very lucky because we got visitors from the Orion system called the Zephelian, which were the original race strain of what's now the Zetas, those sticky little gray things. <laughs> Only some of them right? depends on their agenda. But the Zephelian brought with them organisms from their their uh, system. They weren't originally Zeta particular either. They were originally out of the Orion Bellatrix area. And um, they brought here plagues that only affected the reptilian races. It was beautiful karmic justice for once. <laughs> they brought in certain organisms that over generations began to create a weakness to exposure to sun. In the reptilian strains, it did not affect the regular cloistal strains. The more reptilian gene codes you had, the more susceptible to these diseases you had because they were you know, like accelerated by the sun. This is where our stupid vampire legends come from. There were groups of them who were literally going into, you know, decomposition, cancer type things, because of this viral thing that was brought here by their own kind. And they went underground, and they found that, and this is where you get the blood drinking legends, they found that by consuming the blood of diamond suns, they could temporarily give themselves some immunity Tucson, where they could get on the surface and do things, but they lived underground, and they fed on the blood of things that had the diamond sun coating, and because they didn't have the little DNA monitors to go around and check them out, they just go for whatever they could. they go for certain race populations that had they knew were concentrated light guys, and they would go after them, so that's where our legends are coming from. There's a lot more to our mythology than we realize. All right, so let's see. The period of the plagues was about 200,000, 200, uh, 200 years ago, and it lasted until about 150,000 years ago. All right. Oh, by the way, they called the ones that they didn't call them vampires. They called them uh, necromaton. They were called the necromaton. And it's these guys that are behind the stuff, the teachings of like necromancy and all of this kind of stuff that has surfaced. These guys got involved with Rama races, and got involved with the Syrian blue races that decided they hated humans, and they started this real underground movement of the black magical teachings and that kind of stuff they plug you right into their matrix so they can feed off your kundalini and use you for the purposes. Okay, now get past that. Okay. Okay, anyway, I'm going to bring it up real fast from the root races because I don't have to tell you when or who they were. That's in the book. Okay, after we got through that period in place, the light side got some control over surface because so many of the reptilian strains could not tolerate exposure to the sun. They had to go do hybridization stuff, and most of them went to the inner earth. Some of them were backed out. We got some control over over um, you know, the territories of earth. We got to the point where we could reseed or seed the third seeding, finally get around to it. We put in the cloister races and then their root races, and that began about 75,000 years ago. That's when the first series of cloister and root started to come in together. This is where we started to come in the picture, or like this particular time frame's race line came in the picture. I have all the dates on which ones were entered where and when. They're in the book, so I don't need to go through that right now. Um, let's see. Then there was a bunch of different wars that continued to happen with the Anunnaki from Sirius B, from Nibiru, the Ramas from Inner Earth. It was constantly these groups of people, okay, fighting. This is where the temples that we're looking at out here came into the picture. These were originally created 
by Syrian camps and their races. They were created by the Syrian Egyptians, and actually the Hebrews that were working with them at the time, and the Anu Melchizedeks, who had been seated in here as per the um, Treaty of Al Anu that we had agreed on to stop the, you know, the war that ended the last seating. So they had built the first pyramids. They weren't built for fun. They weren't built for tombs. They were built to show as a show of force because the Anunnaki were starting to invade the Anima. Because of that race strains, they get in control of Atlantis. Atlantis had evolved at the point it was a continent at that point. And it was over, it, it is where they say, like in, in the Southern Ocean, where there was a continent that extended to the Atlantic. And the negative ones were again building up their strength. And the Syrian Council came in to make a show of strength. They, they built the Sphinx and the original pyramid. I'm going to get the dates on this. The first ones were built in 46,459 BC. That was the first time those two sites were built on in this this generation. Okay, the ones there are not from that period. These were wiped out, and they were rebuilt, and then they were wiped out, and they were rebuilt a third time. So what you're seeing there is the third rebuilding of those pyramids, plus a lot of other stuff tacked onto it after that. So the first time that they were built, this is Geops and not the Sphinx. They were built specifically, Cheops is positioned almost dead center on the fourth planetary vortex that leads to, it's the main doorway to the fourth dimensional frequencies to harmonic two. That's where they all come in. It was built as a protection thing. It marked that vortex and it marked Syrian power on that vortex, the, the, you know, the light, light Syrians power on that vortex. And it was on our behalf, on the human lineage behalf that they were built. Um, the Sphinx, was built directly over the main inner earth portal. That's what's under there. Everybody's looking for all records and things like that. What's the big thing about the Sphinx is it's the marker and the protector of the inner earth portals. One of the main ones that goes from this area down into the frequency modulation zone and takes you into the inner earth territories. One of the main ones the Rama kept coming up and invading through. So they sealed the portals to the light codes and these were fortification stations. Now, the pyramid was more than a fortification station. It had been, in its first building, a teleport. It was aligned with, I believe it was Sears B at that point, so they could have almost instantaneous fleet intervention. It was meant to show, we're not going to have you guys push around anymore. You know, you're not going to push us around anymore. They could immediately align with, you know, with, with Sears B through that through the pyramid, and they could come in, it worked as a harmonic resonance chamber, and they could open local portals. I won't call them stargates, because stargates are the full vertical line up, and they only open in cycles. But portals, you can open at different times. They're like horizontal and, vert uh, and, and diagonal, and uh, stargates are vertical. They could open up the portals, and they could get here fast. That, and, and it was very, it worked. It worked very well. The reason it was designed, the Sphinx was originally the face of a lion. And it was a lion because the Anunnaki that had decided to stay with Council and wanted help from Council got help from a race called the Leonines. And I believe they're called the Araga. It's a, it's a strange sounding name. So we just call them the Leonines. And they're literally, they look like cat people. And they're, very, they're from Harmonic 3, they have their matter density. And they intervened and they helped the Anunnaki who wanted help to evolve. This is where you get help. The Hathors got involved. There's another race that had that brought in. It's not exactly cow, but it brought. That's where that affiliation came from. So the Hathor is actually part cow, part cat, part Anunnaki, and part human. <laughs> All right, that's what the Hathor god is. It's a race, and the the Sphinx was not meant to honor the Hathor in particular, but the race that made all of that possible, that was trying to bring the races together, which were the Leonines, and the Anunnaki that helped to build these temples, and they did. They were Syrian Anunnaki, but they were Syrian Council Anunnaki that set the foundation, they gave the plans. This is an Anunnaki design, as far as the temples go. And they taught the Egyptians how to do it, and they built them together. So the first time they were built as a show of power, on the light side, saying, uh-uh, we've had enough. Then, we got into, let's see, the first fall of the pyramids. Okay, the, first, the pyramids got in trouble when Atlantis got in trouble. In 28,000 B.C., 
there were some problems with the Anunnaki bringing in the Draco strings to try to infiltrate, and they lost control of them. The Draco started taking them over and everybody else. So everybody decided we had to get the Dracos out of here, and they decided to use the power generator crystals. They had those power generator crystals from the time when they first seen the races here, and everybody was starting to try to get along. They tried to use the power generator crystals to block in certain areas of the underground tunnels to contain the Dracos until they could be evac'd out by, you know, by, by forcefully evac'd out by the good guys. And the crystals blew. They, they blew the grids. What happened with that? Now, before this, I won't even go into this, but Lumeria fell before that. All right. And that was another one that wasn't exactly done on purpose. It was a stupid accident. And they literally decimated Lumeria. It was like 52,000 or something like that. But we'll bring it up because I'm trying to get to the... Mm-hmm.